Hello, this is Terry Couty. Welcome to the Deep Sea Foundation Educational Breast Reconstruction Channel, where we talk about all topics related to breast cancer and breast reconstruction. I'm very pleased today to be joined by Dr. LaShawn Pierce, who is an oncoplastic and reconstructive breast and general surgeon out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Welcome, Dr. Pierce. Hi, Terry. Thank you very much for having me today. It's really good to have you today. So what I would like to talk to our viewers today about, Dr. Pierce, is oncoplastic breast surgery. Yeah. When a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, there is a coordinated team effort to decide the best safety and long-term benefits for the woman. It doesn't just include breast reconstruction like I had. There, I, I mean, when I had my first diagnosis, I did not have breast reconstruction. I had two lumpectomies. I want you to tell us today what the concept of oncoplastic surgery means and why a woman should talk to her healthcare team about this option. Um, so, uh, again, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, chat this today. Um, and when I probably would be best for me to describe this with um, a, a, a patient that maybe I would see in clinic. And if I see a patient for the first time with a brand new breast cancer diagnosis, um, I firstly, I book out a significant amount of time. So I book out about 45 minutes to talk to her because gone are the days where as breast surgeons, we can walk into a room tell a lady she's got breast cancer and walk out five minutes later. Because clearly there are lots of implications of a diagnosis of breast cancer from not only the surgery and choosing the right type of surgery, which we can talk about shortly, but also talking about other treatments, talking about implications on her family, if she has a genetic breast cancer, talking about risk factors, and talking about complications from surgery and other treatments. So as part of my discussion with the patient, I will say to her generally, look, you do have options uh, and gone are the days where your surgeon will say to you, look, you have to have this operation. Most women I talk to, I will say, well, you could have this operation, but equally you could have this operation. Um, and that really is born out of lots of data and lots of clinical trials looking at these different options. So I'm speaking very broadly, but, um, when we talk about surgical options very broadly, they fall into women can have breast conserving surgery, which is what you had at the beginning, or they can have a mastectomy. Uh, and I will always talk about two seminal studies, which are now pretty historical studies, but yet they are still very relevant today. Those studies came out of uh, Pittsburgh with the very famous uh, Dr. Bernie Fisher and out of Milan with um, Dr. Umberto Veronese. And those two studies did exactly the same thing through the 1990s and late 1980s. They randomized women. So they looked at thousands of women with early breast cancer. And half of those women, they placed into a group who had a lumpectomy or breast conserving surgery, or what we call sometimes a wide local excision, followed by radiation treatment. And the other half of those women, they put into a group that had a mastectomy, which all through the 20th century was considered as the standard treatment. And a lot of women, women had a mastectomy for breast cancer. And in 2002, both of those studies published their 20 year follow up. And what they showed is that after 20 years and perhaps even longer, your survival from breast cancer is equivalent. And that is a big take home message I say to patients because a lot of women still come into my clinic and say, look, I just want to have a mastectomy because I want to try and see my grandkids grow up and I want to try and survive this breast cancer. And I say to them, well, that's fine. And we will respect your wishes and we can do a mastectomy, but you need to know that you don't have to have a mastectomy. We could achieve exactly that same goal with breast conserving surgery. And we do know sometimes I take them through the wealth of literature showing that women that have breast cons conservation surgery do for the most part, have improved quality of life metrics after 5, 10, 15 years compared, compared to their counterparts that have a mastectomy. Now, don't get me wrong, there are uh, women who we have to say, look, there's no role for breast conserving surgery. So for example, women who've got a reoccurrence after previous uh, lumpectomy and radiation, well, they can't have radiation again. So sometimes you have to say to those patients that you should really have a mastectomy. 
other women have so-called multicentric breast cancer, which means that they not only have they don't only have one cancer, they have more than one cancer, and they're in separate quadrants of the breast, which means that we can't really normally uh, do two lumpectomies, although things are changing. Um, and so, so there are a few women who we have to say, look, you really can't have a lumpectomy, you should have a mastectomy. But for the most part, women with early breast cancer, with one focus of cancer in their breast, can be counseled on breast conserving surgery, safe in the knowledge now that they aren't doing themselves any disservice as far as their survival uh, their prognosis is concerned. So I say to my patients, look, to be blunt, the chances of you being alive in 20, 30, sometimes 40 years time is the same if you choose a lumpectomy or if you choose a mastectomy. And for a lot of women, that is very empowering because, uh, like I said, uh, given the choice, a lot of women in my, in my practice would rather not have a mastectomy. And now that we have that, the ability to, to reassure them that um, their, their survival is equivalent, that that's very very important for women so when we're talking about breast conserving surgery when a patient has or wants a lumpectomy um, we, we explore that a little bit more and it comes down to one main philosophy and that's looking at a patient's tumor and comparing at the volume of that tumor the size of that tumor to a patient's breast size so i'll give you an example and if a lady has a three centimeter cancer in their breast and they have an a-cup breast that's a completely different scenario to a woman that has a three centimeter cancer in a double D cup breast, because clearly the double D cup lady will wake up from the, the cancer surgery and hopefully won't even be able to tell they've lost about three or four centimeters of breast tissue. Whereas a lady with an A cup breast will wake up from her surgery and if she's had a lumpectomy, there will be an obvious scar, there'll be an obvious uh, defect in the breast. We talk about a, a dip where the uh, tumor cavity is, we talk about some puckering, for want of a better word, breast deformity. And that then becomes very, very difficult to uh, correct in the future. So nowadays, if I'm seeing a lady in my clinic and she wants to have breast conservation surgery, and I would suggest that having what I call a conventional lumpectomy would leave her asymmetrical and leave her with significant deformity, which may in fact affect the quality of her life due to her asymmetry in the future, then I talk about oncoplastics. And so oncoplastics really is born out of the same principles of all cancer surgery. So taking the cancer out with a good, clear margin, but also marrying that with certain plastic surgical procedures, which historically have been in the uh, portfolio of the plastic surgeon, things like breast reductions or um, small flaps to correct the deformity at the time of surgery. So to fill that hole that we've left behind from the cancer surgery so for example going back to our, our example of a lady with let's say a d-cut breast who has a, a sizable tumor now she could have conventional lumpectomy surgery but invariably especially after radiation she will shrink and so her breast size will be smaller compared to her other side so i would offer that lady a breast reduction where we kill two birds with one stone and we essentially do the lumpectomy get a clear margin and then combine it with a reduction operation, not only on the cancer side, but also do a balancing or symmetrizing operation on the other side. And so I find that patients then wake up with essentially a breast reduction scar. So they don't have any, any, any um, unwieldy scars that will be obviously visible when they wear a bra or a swimsuit or a low cut top in the future. They've got their symmetry preserved and these are the patients that, in fact, I find are the most satisfied because, let's face it, no one wants to get breast cancer. No one ever makes this choice to go down this road of treatment. But especially for the women who struggled their lives with larger breasts, they have neck pain, they have back pain, and they've struggled with the sheer volume of their breasts. This really is a silver lining because now not only are they having their cancer treated, but they're also waking up and all of those symptoms from their large volume breasts have disappeared. So it really is a silver lining for some of these women because they, they wake up and all of a sudden their quality of life is, is significantly improved. And um, we're actually looking at these patients in a study in my practice. So um, I, I, we're doing a quality of life questionnaire study where I give these patients a quality of life questionnaire prior to their surgery, which looks at all facets. I think there's four different domains we're going to look at. We're looking at their physical well-being, so the neck pain, the shoulder pain. We're looking at their emotional well-being, 
we're looking at their psychological well-being and their sexual well-being. So there's four domains, both before surgery, and then I'll see them three months after and nine months after surgery and repeat the questionnaire, hopefully aiming to show that these patients have a preserved quality of life despite the fact they've had this awful diagnosis and these, dif these difficult treatments. And sometimes, actually, paradoxically, we will find that their quality of life actually improves after their surgery because, because they've relieved themselves of their, these musculoskeletal symptoms. You know, I have to tell you, Dr. Pierce, I almost felt like I was in my previous consult in 2002 with my lumpectomy and fast forwarding to my second diagnosis in 2014, you gave such a good visual through your words about the uh, aesthetic outcomes that women can expect. But here's my takeaway to, to wrap this conversation up. And I do thank you so much for helping us understand about oncoplastic surgery and why we should ask about it. Safe tumor resection is paramount. It's paramount to uh, you know, patient survival. And the other thing that I'm hearing is through the development of oncoplastic breast surgery, patients now can think about and speak to their healthcare team about the aesthetic outcomes because as you are doing, you're reporting on patient outcomes. I love those quality of life and those patient reported outcome studies. I have a question. Can you please let me know when that study is available? Sure. I love patient reported outcomes because what that's doing is asking us how we feel after this surgery. Thank you so much for joining us today. That's my pleasure, Terry, anytime. And thank you very much for all the work that you do in promoting awareness about options because as a breast cancer surgeon these days, I think it is all about communication. And um, part of the reason I spend so much time with patients is because I think there are so many avenues and, and facets of patients' uh, lives that we have to explore. And every, one of the rewarding things about my job is that every patient is different. So two patients may have the same or similar tumor or similar cancer, but they might choose completely different operations. So one of the things that I feel very humbled about in my day-to-day -day practice is being let in, I, I get let into a little window of a patient's life that perhaps they wouldn't even share with their nearest and their dearest. And we get to explore what's important to them and what their wishes are and how they see some of um, their cancer treatments going. And I, I honestly do feel very, um, uh, lucky to to be able to 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 have that kind of special for want of a better word relationship with with a patient um, i find it very very fulfilling but but thank you very much for everything that, that you do in, in keeping this um keeping this going absolutely um can i invite you back for another video soon yes please please do anytime very i good. think we have i think we have more to discuss yeah. i'm going to put your contact information um, at the end of this video, at, after it is produced, please watch and like our videos and let us know as patients, as plastic surgeons, as healthcare providers, let us know what other topics we can cover here at Deep Sea Foundation. Again, thanks to Dr. Pierce for joining us today from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Thank you very much, Terry.